This week, head over to your Natural History Museum with the brand new modular. You can also find some information on space with a gifted purchase from Galileo. And get over to pick a brick before it's too late. All that and much more on this week's breaking news. So the LEGO group has been coming out with quite a few colors over the years for all the LEGO bricks and different pieces that we've seen in all the sets. And some of you might be wondering what are some of those colors and do my LEGO sets have them? And maybe there's a better way to consolidate all that so I can see it. And there actually is. There's a great periodic table which is in its third iteration over at we love what you build it's a great website that outlines not only for lego but a bunch of other different aspects in the lego community and it has the periodic table you can go over to wlwyb.com you can use the code back to brick with the number two and get 10 percent off your order so head over there to get your periodic table and find all the lego colors as they continue to update of course the periodic table is only going to get bigger and bigger Lego. 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 Breaking news. Hey everybody, welcome Breaking back news. to Back to Brick. Breaking I'm your host Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow AFOLs about their Lego designs, and we get down to the breaking news every week to talk about all things Lego has been up to for the past week. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're not subscribed or you're new to the podcast, please do so. That would be great to promote the podcast and show that there are people that love to listen to this podcast and maybe help me get into the Lego Ambassador Network. Also, if you like reading the news, you can head over to backtobrick.com as I continue to update more and more blog posts from all the news that I do get to produce at the end of the week. It does take a little bit more time, but you get to hear it and read it if you'd like. If you'd like to support the podcast, I would love if you could head over to the YouTube and subscribe there. And if you really would love to support the Back to Brick brand and all that we're doing over here, or what I'm doing, you can go over and become a patron over on our Patreon. I always want to thank our patrons, Belfont Brick Studio, Ryan Moore, Franco Portelli, Derek Graff, Jimmy Tuck, Ryan S., and David. They all are huge supporters of the podcast, and they get the podcast with no ads on it, get it early, and a bunch of other things. They did get our latest episode, which was with Sean, where we discussed Lego investing, and you can go check that out on YouTube, or you can listen to it as the previous podcast episodes. I'll put the link in the description so you can check that out. But on the admin side, there really isn't too much. I'm still working really hard to find a new job, but I'm also learning a lot about the podcast and marketing and blogging and writing. It's it's a lot to digest and we're, we're, we're figuring it out. My wife did have COVID, so then I felt like it could be something, and our schedule is just always all over the place, and uh, Halloween was this weekend, and we, we met more of our neighbors we've never seen and handed out candy. I went as Kevin Flynn from Tron Legacy, which if you know what I'm talking about, you'll understand that the costume was really, really cool. I am doing a new series on Instagram, which talks about random Lego sets as they do quick reviews on them under a minute, so you can check that out as well. And that's all the admin I have for this week. We are going to be doing our set review. As always, this set will be set 10270 bookshop and there is an affiliate link if you are interested in buying this before it retires this year all right let's get into the breaking news one of the latest releases from this week was tiny plants another set of the botanical series from lego they also put it under the icon set but i call them the potted plants because they're plants that are in some terracotta pots they're an 18 plus set and have 758 pieces will come at a cost of $50, but they have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total pots, which is pretty cool because you get some very nice variety of plants to it. Some you might know and some you might not. A lot of interesting cactus plants, but of course my favorite is going to be their little Venus flytrap that they have. And what is really cool is the terracotta pots because I mean, they come in these little pots all the time, and they've done a great job with using even barrel elements and making these cone shapes, which is not the easiest thing to do with Lego. And having the Botanical Series such a reasonable price means that a lot of people will get it and display it around their home. This is great for all those who, well, can't keep anything alive. And sometimes I'm pretty good at it, but not very much. That's why my wife takes care of the two plants that we really have. But this will be coming out on December 1st, so just before the holiday season. The largest Lego store in the world has an official opening date now. Now, for some of you, you may know that the largest store right now is in Leicester Square in London, and it's been that way since 2016. 
But now the newest store is going to be in Australia at the Sydney Arcade. It goes from 900 square meters instead of the 805, which was the largest before. So almost 100 square meters more, which I, I don't know. I always think of meters at a little bit under three feet, which it just math gets complicated when you go from Imperial to metric and vice versa. But the store will be opening on November 11th at 9.30 a.m. And there will be, uh, of course, some great events that are just going to happen. A lot of people will be there. You probably get some exclusive minifigure or set when you go to the opening. And I, I know a lot of people are probably going to travel there to just go to the opening. Having such a large store means that, of course, that they can stock it more with sets and hopefully bring more and more people into the store. As every time I've gone into a Lego store, it's, it's pretty busy, especially in areas that have those larger populations. So this is really fun, and I'm excited to see them grow more stores like this around the world. As, I mean, Australia is pretty far from everything, and London's been the central one, and now maybe we'll get some more in the United States or some in the Asian market area. Now, my wife and I are headed off to a friend's wedding this weekend, and I took a look at their registry, and unfortunately, they didn't have Lego sets on there. When I had our wedding, I wanted to put the Millennium Falcon on there, but my wife said no, and in retrospect, I think she should have just said yes, because, well, we would have enjoyed it just as much. And now a website has decided, well, let's make a list and put some things on there. A lot of things are not just registered for parents, but if you do have kids and you're getting married, some of these sets are for you, but hey, they or for them, but hey, there's sets for you as well. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, there's some of those. 3 one Castle for the young kids, Sonic, and they even have the Temple of the Golden Idol from Indiana Jones. Just a hodgepodge of different Lego sets that, why not? Throw them on your wedding registry. Don't hold back. If you're a huge Lego fan or your partner's a huge Lego fan, throw it on there because, well, it's your wedding. Get what you want and enjoy it. There's a brand new pumpkin in town. This time, it's the world's largest Lego pumpkin. It was built at the Legoland in Denmark, and it measures over 8 feet tall and 5 feet wide. And it is 100,000 pieces, which is pretty incredible to have a pumpkin that size. What's really cool is actually you can go inside and stand in it and take some photos. So it looks like you're in, well, a giant pumpkin. It is carved, but not all the way through, which is a little disappointing because you'd want to see inside, but probably structurally they need to do that. But it does set a new Guinness World Record for the largest Lego pumpkin. And as we've seen before, there are a lot of different Guinness World Records you can have. And with Lego, they just keep expanding and expanding. So if you've ever had the idea to, oh, let me create a Guinness World Record for uh, a Lego bike pull or a bike pulling the most amount of Lego train or something like that, the longest Lego train. There's so many things that you can do. Just go out and try and ask Guinness World Record if, hey, can uh, can this count towards something? But having a pumpkin like this for the holiday season is really fun and enjoyable for all those who go to the Legoland Denmark this year. As more and more people just see the application of Lego bricks, a lot of them are looking towards using them in large-scale real-world projects. There's a company in Florida that's been looking into this and building some complexes, like an apartment building in Palm Beach, Florida. Now, this apartment complex uses literal giant concrete bricks that they hammer together and use sealant to build it. And what's nice is that being such strong material as concrete that they can then be great for withstanding strong storms because in a normal block house you have concrete blocks on top of each other but with some mortar between the bricks and you know those can still shift but this doesn't shift because they're interlocking like we're going to see more of this maybe not just in florida but around the world i'd love to see if they use wood ones at any point and have them filled with just void of air or whatever will be the best way to keep insulation and have these really cool structures that are large scale that you can live in your large scale Lego apartment. Well, the largest Lego modular has finally been revealed. This is the Natural History Museum, which is the biggest news of the week. It'll cost $300 and be released not on January 1st this year, but December 1st. So it'll be ready before the Christmas season, which I think was a big push by the Lego group because, well, it's such a popular series that why not do it a month early and get in on the Christmas season of spending? The set itself is a total of 4,014 pieces in the 18 plus rating, and it has two floors. 
The primary focus is going to be inside the museum, of course, but there's some fine details on the outside, such as the main structure has two posters on it with a brachiosaurus and then the space section, because those are the two sections you'll find inside the museum. Other floors, of course, have different sections to it. They have some hidden features, such as the top floor has a drawing section that calls back to Ole Kirk Christensen, and then there's a classic space set in a super mini, mini scale, and there is a solar system mobile within the space section, which I think is pretty cool, definitely having all those different features in each planet to it. You can go up to the roof and there's an observatory, well, a tiny observatory to it. But overall, the design is, I'd say, kind of simple, but I think that's the elegance sometimes in museums. They do have more of a greenish hint to the exterior. It does come with a tree outside. But when you go down to like the mall in Washington, D.C., most of the buildings are similar. They're not that crazy. The, the main feature is going to be a brachiosaurus, which is a skeleton that goes all the way uh, up through the two floors. What I, I kind of don't like is it does have a, a stand that goes all the way to the neck. But now that I think about it more, that is what they would do at a museum, pretty much, or have it held from the ceiling with wires. But they can't really do that in this set. They do have another small feature with the curator is good callback to the professor from The Adventures, and maybe one day we'll get an Adventures remake, but right now, I think the museum is a great addition to the series because we've seen so many apartments, a grocery store, a hotel, and jazz club. So this is a nice uh, point to go, and maybe we'll get probably a library at some point or some other public building that I think would be a fun addition to anyone's Lego city. Two new Jurassic World sets were revealed. One is set 76963, the Baby Dinosaur Rescue Center, which is a four plus set at 139 pieces. It has a little rover, it has two minifigures, and a couple baby dinosaurs, which uh, I wish I could. There's a pterodactyl, there's a full scale pterodactyl, a velociraptor, a triceratops, and uh, I always forget the one with like an armadillo style to it. But having all these figures, of course, is going to cost you a little bit. And right now it looks to be projected at uh, about 50 US dollars. Uh, to to reclarify, it comes with Darius and Sammy, which I'm guessing is part of their line of minifigures before, or maybe even the animated TV show that they've been talking about. And then the second one is a little bit more interesting. It's seven six zero, excuse me, seven six nine six four dinosaur fossil, the T Rex skull. So it's the Tyrannosaurus Rex skull in a darker tan and regular tan. So it's it's but older, not just white. So it's not as boring. And it comes with a T Rex footprint in stone, and then a little plaque at the bottom which does call out is a uh, Jurassic World set, not a Jurassic Park, which I think that they could have done Jurassic Park. I'm not sure why they didn't in this case. But I think this is also a good indication that we're going to get more like this. And maybe we'll get a bra- uh, Brontosaurus or a Velociraptor. There are a lot of different options they could do. And it's similar to what they did with the Helmet series for Star Wars. This is a, and Marvel and DC. So this is another way that they can apply that to the Jurassic Parks because, well, we all know them and it's a great way to continue those lines of designs. This is another very interesting leak that happened. It was for the next collectible minifigure series. This is series 25, and they've got some great figures from Nor Detective, so he's black and white with a fish, which is the red herring, Esport Girl, Basil the Bat Lord, so that's part of the old classic series. We've Paraplegic Runner, so they have different feet on it, which I think is super unique. A mushroom head child or girl, Triceratops costumed minifigure. But the biggest news of all of them is the goat farmer. He's pretty unique himself. He's got a nice mustache and an over hood to him, but there's a goat. We are getting the Lego goat back. Now, this is an all-white goat. The one that most of us know is the spotted goat in dark, or excuse me, medium nougat, and it only came out in one set back 
In 2011, the Mill Village Raid set 7189, and we've been begging for it back for, for so, so long. And now having an collectible minifigure, that is just so cool. It is going to be hard because, well, collectible minifigures are now on cardboard, so not everybody can just go grab the goats, so you might have to take some time. But try to get one. It, they're just really cool, and it's exciting to see it finally come back for all the LEGO fans out there. So... These are going to be very, uh, well, very hard to find. So good luck. And we're expecting probably January or February of next year. Here's a fun opportunity. Do you want your Lego set displayed in a museum? Now, not to the Natural History Museum that we were just talking about with the modular, but at the Grand Rapids Art Museum, or the GRAM as it's called, is having a brand new exhibit. It's called Brick by Brick, the Creative Art of Lego. And they're going to be opening it on November 4th and running through May 18th, 2024. This is in collaboration with the Bricks and Minifigures Grand Rapids store, which just opened this last December. And they say the Graham director and CEO Cindy Fole says, the Grand Rapids Art Museum is thrilled to welcome Lego lovers of all ages to Graham this fall to experience the joy of creativity with Lego. And they, she talks more on that it impacts so many different generations and building in their space. And this is a new space in the Graham, which is called the blank exhibit space so that they can integrate and continue to update throughout the time. There's going to be different challenges and scavenger hunts and uh, create your own minifigure drawing activities. It's definitely a way to continue to integrate not only adults, but kids and the whole families together to enjoy in a place, not just for Lego conventions, but at a museum, an art museum, which sometimes it can be boring, but this one seems to be pretty fun. There's also, as I said, a Lego challenge. You can enter a challenge of creativity that's no larger than 14 by 14 by 14 inches. Adults have until November 17th to enter theirs. Kids 17 and under have until December 18th. And families, when they do a collaboration, have until January 5th, 2024. This was stated by Julie Peterson, owner of Bricks and Minifigures. We believe in the transformation, transformative power of creativity, play, and fun for all ages. We hope to inspire Grand Rapids to more play and creativity through our pieces, Rainbow World, which explores the fun of color and Lego parts of all kinds. This is really fun, and it's definitely a way to have people interact with LEGO on a grander scale. I hope we see more of this across the country, maybe not just in art museums, but different installments all over, um, having it in malls and other museums. I think it's just really cool. Adults are $12, seniors are $10, students are 6 and then anything anyone under 5 is free. So if you're in the Grand Rapids area, go check this out. It's opening this coming week, and I think that you will have a wonderful time. You might want to head over to the Pick a Brick website because over 2,000 LEGO elements are going to be taken down. Now, I'm not 100% sure why because I guess that they're going to be doing service and they're going to be adding new ones uh, to replace those. Now, this happens now until November 17th, so you have to get over there and get those pieces. Now, you can do them in uh, bulk because some of them run out. Well, then they're gone. You can't get them unless you go over to Brooklink on the third-party sites to do well, it's third party, second party sites to do that. And there's a list that I will put in the description that was made over on Rebrickable so you can understand which ones you might need to get and do that before the 17th. We talked about some of the leaked Sonic the Hedgehog figures, and there's actually a new set that just was revealed. It's set 76995, Hedgehog Shadows Escape. And it shows Hedgehog or Shadow the Hedgehog riding on a hot rod. And there's a rhino, I think, chasing him with a little chicken in the back. And it shows that there's a kind of crossing area with Sonic made in an egghead uh, containment unit. I, I can't remember the whole story behind it, but I'm pretty sure Dr. Eggman, not egghead, Eggman, was the one who created Shadow and is a big uh, push to take down Sonic. It's going to be a $20 set and released January 1st of next year. Got another set of reveals for the Minecraft series for 2024. We have the Armory and the Animal Sanctuary. 
Both sets are going to be at a price uh, similar because they're about 203 pieces for the Armory and 206 for the Animal Sanctuary. The Armory, of course, has a bunch of armor for your Minecraft figure. They've got the gold, they've got jade, a lot of swords and shields and stuff. So it's a nice uh, addition to your armory if you need one. And then the Minecraft Animal Sanctuary has a lot of the animals. You've got a cat, rabbit, cow, sheep, dog, and then your character, as well as a baby zombie, which I have no idea what that is. There's, I love the little animals, though, because they're in the blocky form. And Minecraft still seems to be dominating as a major theme for LEGO. So as they come out with just a couple here and there, I think they're continuing on the theme that is still a huge promotion for Minecraft, which is going strong. We also got two more reveals, this time of the Super Mario. This one's the, we have the Penguin Family Snow Adventure set 71430. This set is 228 pieces and has a, well, large-scale penguin. It all has a, a Goomba and then a baby penguin. The uh, set itself is just more of a playable area. I, I think there's maybe one or two codes to it, but nothing crazy. I think in general, we're going to see a dwindling of these types of sets and more on the lines of what they're doing with Sonic. Who knows? Hopefully we'll see a change and maybe get some more minifigure or consoles that we're all wishing for. The second one is the Mario Super Mario Nabity at Toad's shop. It has a Nabity the rabbit, which is this purple type rabbit and kind of creepy smile to it. Then you have Toad and his little shop. So it's a little hut that says shop and it's in a mushroom form. Not really much to that either. 230 pieces and expected to release January again. TikTok is a way to continue all of our favorite TV shows. And now you can, of course, adapt it and have Lego form in minifigures this time. And of course, a super exciting show that's now being adapted into Lego is nothing by Lego, but a, a Lego creator over on Roman Roy C-U-N-T. I'm not going to say that on here. It's rewatching the series of Succession. And it talks about this one is depiction of Greg and Tom talking about Greg's principles. And it has a side by side showing on it. This is on X slash Twitter. And it's also on TikTok. A lot of people are weighing in. And they said, I'm ready to rewatch the whole show in Lego form. And how this is so accurate, a second user weighed in. And a lot of just obsessed you know it's very short comments but impactful and seeing this we're going to see a lot of memes probably redone in lego as they've done before one i love is uh, did you put your name in the goblet of fire which if you haven't seen it on youtube or reels or tiktok you gotta go see it. it it'll make you fall on the floor laughing if you're a harry potter fan a fan has created a really fun mock, and as a Disney fan, I wanted to call it out. It's the Pirates of the Caribbean ride replica at Disney World, and it has the full depiction of the village area with some of the houses on fire and the characters on their different levels. You're also going to have, of course, the ride, which is the boat going through different areas and traveling down uh, little slides to it. All created in Lego form to depict, well, probably one of the most iconic rides at Disney. And having this creation is just super cool and an idea that we should definitely try to adapt in Lego form elsewhere. It's created and depicted by Joel Neighbor, and he has the full Pirates of the Caribbean feature. And it's not in the dark room. like a, it's, it's a full thing. They've got a full pirate ship. They've got the, the queue line. Mini, or excuse me, Donald Duck and Daisy Duck are waiting in line to go on the ride. And there is water, so it, it does have that, that running water feature to it. Might be a little faster than you're used to, but I think this is super well done. Definitely a way to be creative and have that Disney aspect to it and just enjoy building with Lego as always. And that's all the breaking news we have this week, folks. Thank you all for tuning into the podcast. As always, please help support the podcast. You can do so over at our YouTube just be by becoming a subscriber. You can also subscribe to this podcast and check in every week for the latest news, or you can really support the podcast and the Back to Brick brand on the Back to Brick 
Patreon, which I'm so happy for all the people that already do. And for all those new people, please, it's just a few dollars that can help and go such a long way for this brand. And make sure to support by going back to listening to some of the episodes. Our last one was Sean on the Brick Bucks Lego Investor, which was such a fun conversation. That was our last episode. And you can also find the video of it on YouTube. So you can enjoy that on YouTube or just have a listen while you're on your drive. As I always do on the podcast, we're going to move into our set review. This one is on the bookshop which is another modular, also part of the creator expert line before it was turned into icons. It is a 16 plus set, 2,504 pieces. You'll get 1,300 insiders points and it has five total minifigures. It's about 12 inches high, 10 inches wide and 10 inches deep. The bookstore sells for $200 and has a rating of 194 with four and a half stars. And it is labeled as hard to find because this is going to be a retiring set. So the set itself has two main buildings, the brick books and an apartment building. The brick, uh, excuse me, not brick books, the birch books, because there is a birch tree out front. It does have this really cool little, uh, airplane that a guy is trying to get down for this kid on the ladder and the different levels um, have so many different features as well with the apartment having a fireplace inside a little television and upstairs where someone can rest there's a clock with a book because well they probably went over to the bookstore and purchased it and overall the detailing is um, it's good it's not I don't think the best out of all the modular sets but it has uh, some character to it and the minifigures are nice to put into your town setting overall at two hundred dollars i i wish they would go back to the lower price point i mean for the amount of pieces you're getting it it is still a good price because you're getting over five hundred dollars but i think 180 was pretty good and now they're just climbing and climbing so that that is likely to retire with still some sets left on the shelves so maybe you'll see a discount not sure i mean a lot of people do collect the modular so if you do collect them and you don't have this set well you best be getting on it because if you listen to our interview last week modulars are a pretty good investment if you're not looking to keep them long term so i I'll say that it is something to get before it retires if you are a modular collector. All right, that's all I have this week. Thank you again for everyone listening. And I do have some exciting news in the next couple of weeks, so I'm excited to share that with you. Just a little teaser since all those that listen to the end here. And well, I'll leave you as I always do. Get creative, get out there, and go build something. 